coming up on this week's episode. Liberty University offers a combined aviation degree. The U.S. Air Force removes the minimum height requirement for pilots. And the University of North Dakota is restarting flight training. Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, a weekly news program dedicated to all things flight training, as well as the amazing industry built around it. There's no segment more important to the growth of the aviation world than the flight training community. I'm Sophie Herlock. Beginning this fall, the Liberty University School of Aeronautics will offer a Bachelor of Science in Aviation Technology, which will provide students with the requirements needed to pursue their commercial pilot's license and aviation mechanics certification. This new degree will qualify students in both areas in four years, as opposed to the traditional five-year track for the combined degree. The flight portion of the degree will include ground and air instruction for the private pilot, instrument rating, and commercial pilot certifications, while the maintenance program will take students through the complete FAA mechanics program. Students in the program will receive ground and air instruction towards their commercial pilot certificate. The combined degree also expands career options for graduates. Pilots flying for smaller aviation companies may be required to change a tire, repair flight controls, or perform routine maintenance, so having the AMP certification is an additional skill set attracted to employers. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Like most of you, we're still working from home. We miss being around pilots. But the most important thing right now is to mitigate your risks and use this time productively while we all get through this. Folks, King Schools is open and we're 100% operational. We're making sure that your courses work and are available for you 24-7. We look forward to the time when we can see you again at the airport. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer, offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design. The Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, the LightSport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrel is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at some interesting news flying out of the flight training industry. It's time for today's trip around the patch. The new FAA Aviation Instructor's Handbook is now available. However, in looking through the updates on risk management in Chapter 1 and the new Chapter 10, the Society of Aviation and Flight Educators points out some outdated ideas persisting in the handbook. In particular, SAFE was critical of the use of learning styles, which has long been discarded by educational researchers, as well as the use of the word learner in place of student, and flight deck instead of cockpit. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's Board of Trustees voted unanimously to reopen the institution's residential campuses in Florida and Arizona for face-to-face -face instruction on June 30th. The university will be using its path forward strategy to ensure the safety of their faculty, staff, and students as they open campuses back up. ERAU has also made modifications to their campus policies, such as requiring PPE to be worn in dining areas and classrooms, enhancing the cleaning of surfaces, and enforcing social distancing. The Aerospace Center for Excellence will host its Destination Aviation Summer Camp for participants online this summer. The ACE team will be delivering free content designed for campers ages 11 to 17 years old, covering aviation lessons, field trips, and interviews with aerospace professionals. The camp begins June 15th and is six weeks long. RAF Squadron Leader Chris Pearson and Flight Lieutenant Jamie Bell are the first to partake in a trial which may provide an alternative training pipeline pathway to flying a fast jet. Having achieved their wings in under a year, both pilots will now progress onto the Hawk T-2 with 25F Squadron at RAF Valley later in the summer. In doing so, they may pave the way for future fast jet pilots to earn their wings at RAF College Cranwell. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. 
One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. As part of the Air Force's ongoing effort to encourage a more diverse pool of applicants to pursue careers in aviation, the minimum height requirement for officer applicants who wish to fly has been removed. While still preserving safety of flight, the policy adjustment prevents initial applicants who are below 64 inches or above 77 inches in height from requiring an accessions waiver. With the removal of the blanket height standard, the medical and operations communities will apply an anthropometric screening process to individual applicants for placement in an aircraft they can safely fly as they pursue a rated track. Under the previous medical standards directory requirements, the height to become an Air Force pilot was a standing height of 64 inches to 77 inches and a sitting height of 34 to 40 inches. Although most height waivers were approved, the previous restriction eliminated approximately 44% of the U.S. female population between the ages of 20 to 29. University of North Dakota officials have announced a phased plan to resume student flight training, with some students already starting back up their training last week. Even with the restart, state directives concerning individuals traveling to North Dakota from other countries remain unchanged. Individuals returning from another country must self-quarantine for 14 days upon arrival, and individuals coming from another state are encouraged to do the same. Due to the phased nature of the restart, UND Aerospace urges students not to return to campus until notified by UND flight operators of their targeted start date. The university also conducted a safety risk assessment regarding its restart plan per the FAA safety management system. These mitigation techniques were developed based on guidelines from the CDC and the North Dakota Department of health with constant consultation with numerous other flight schools across the country. And that wraps up this week's airborne flight training. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To get the latest aviation and aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you back here Friday.